we are ranking the six fastest fighter jets of the Vietnam War, where speed was not just a number, it decided who lived, who chased, and who escaped in the world's most dangerous sky. From subsonic gunslingers to true Mach 2 Titans, each contender rewrote the rules of aerial combat in surprising ways. Which iconic aircraft truly ruled the skies at top speed? Let us begin with number six. Number six is the MiG-17, known by its NATO name, Fresco. On paper, it was the slowest jet in the Vietnam War's top ranks, with a manufacturer rated top speed of 711 miles per hour in clean configuration, well below the sound barrier. But raw numbers tell only part of the story. The MiG-17's real weapon was its agility. In the hands of North Vietnamese pilots, it became a master of tight, sustained turns, outmaneuvering faster American jets when the fight got close. Its cannon armament proved deadly in these knife-edge dogfights. In June 1966, MiG-17 aircraft from the 923rd Regiment ambushed U.S. Navy F-8 Crusaders near Hanoi, downing at least one with a burst of cannon fire. While the MiG-17 could not outrun its opponents, it could outturn them, forcing U.S. pilots to respect its threat despite its place at the bottom of the speed ladder. The MiG-19, known to NATO as the Farmer, brought the first taste of true supersonic speed to the North Vietnamese Air Force. Unlike its predecessor, the MiG-17, the MiG-19 could break the sound barrier in level flight reaching nearly 955 miles per hour at altitude, according to Soviet test figures. Twin afterburning engines gave it a blistering climb and a short burst of acceleration, ideal for quick response intercepts. North Vietnamese pilots scrambled MiG-19s to intercept incoming American strike packages, using their speed to close the gap before US jets could reach their targets. Armed with two powerful 30mm cannons, the MiG-19 was a threat in close-range gun attacks, but its limited fuel supply kept missions short. Pilots often had less than 30 minutes from wheels up to landing. In combat, the MiG-19's supersonic dash sometimes allowed it to make a high-speed pass through U.S. formations, firing and then breaking away before American fighters could react. While it never matched the raw velocity of later Mach 2 jets, the MiG-19's ability to break Mach 1 in theater made it a crucial evolutionary step, bridging the gap between subsonic dogfighters and the high-speed interceptors that would soon dominate the skies. The Vought F-8 Crusader carried the title of the Navy's fastest carrier-based fighter during the Vietnam War, reaching a certified maximum speed near Mach 1.86 about 1,225 miles per hour at altitude. This speed advantage was a rare commodity on a carrier deck, where launch weight, sea conditions, and fuel limits demanded a careful balance between raw power and operational safety. Pilots respected the Crusader's afterburner, which could rocket the jet past Mach 1.8 in a climb, but each burst came at a steep cost. Fuel gauges dropped quickly, and prolonged runs risked overheating both engine and airframe. The F-8's reputation as the last gunfighter came from its internal cannons, which, despite the missile age, scored several kills in close combat. In Navy hands, the Crusader achieved a remarkable 6 to 1 air-to-air -air kill ratio, outperforming every other U.S. fighter in the war by that measure yet its top speed fell just shy of land-based Mach 2 rivals. Still, for a jet that launched from pitching decks and tangled with nimble MiGs, the F-8 Crusader set the standard for carrier-borne speed and agility, proving that raw velocity alone did not decide a dogfight. Energy management and pilot skill mattered just as much. The MiG-21, known as the Fish Bed, brought a new dimension to air combat over Vietnam. With a top speed just over Mach 2, this compact interceptor could accelerate faster than nearly anything else in the North Vietnamese arsenal. 
in the hands of skilled V Pi AF pilots, the MiG-21 became a weapon of surprise and velocity. Its climb rate and raw acceleration allowed North Vietnamese squadrons to launch vertical snap attacks, diving at high speed onto U.S. strike groups, firing their missiles, and then rocketing away before U.S. fighters could respond. Pilots described using speed almost as a shield, counting on the fishbed's ability to vanish from radar scopes if they timed their escape perfectly and watched their fuel. Captured MiG-21 fighters evaluated by U.S. teams in Project Have Donut confirmed the fighter's Mach 2.05 capability at altitude, though Southeast Asia's heat and humidity knocked a few percent off the numbers. In real combat, VPA F pilots rarely risk prolonged dogfights. With only about 25 minutes of endurance on internal fuel, every second spent at full afterburner meant less time to fight, and a greater risk of running dry before reaching base. But for hit-and-run tactics, that limitation did not matter. The MiG-21 speed gave North Vietnamese controllers a unique tool. They could launch interceptors, vector them for a single high-speed pass, and then pull them out before U.S. escorts could close in. This vertical snap attack style forced American pilots to rethink their tactics, always wary of a fishbed streaking in out of nowhere, taking a shot, and disappearing into the clouds. Despite its blistering speed, the MiG-21's short range and limited missile load kept it from dominating the skies outright. But in the deadly chess match above North Vietnam, acceleration and escape mattered just as much as top speed. For its genuine Mach 2 punch and the way it shaped both enemy tactics and American anxiety, the MiG-21 claims the number three spot among Vietnam's kings of speed. The Republic F-105. Thunder Chief, known to its crews as the Thud, was the fastest strike fighter of the Vietnam War, built not just for speed, but for brute force. Official test flights clocked the F-105 at Mach 2.08, over 1,390 miles per hour at altitude in clean configuration. Yet pilots rarely flew it clean. The Thud's real claim to fame was carrying up to 14,000 pounds of bombs, more than any American fighter before it, while still outrunning most adversaries. Designed to deliver nuclear weapons at low level, the F-105 found itself repurposed for relentless conventional bombing runs over North Vietnam. Speed wasn't just a number on the dash, it was a lifeline. Medal of Honor pilot Leo Thorsnesis described the sensation like this, hitting the burner at treetop height. The thud felt more like a bullet than a bird. The sky blurred, my hands tightened on the stick as the entire cockpit vibrated at the edge of control. When surface-to-air missiles or MiG-17s threatened, F-105 pilots would jettison their loads and push the throttles to full afterburner, sometimes topping Mach 1 at low altitude as they raced for safety. But that velocity came at a price. The heavy bomb load and long, straight attack runs made the F-105 an easy target for ground fire and nimble MiG-17s. Loss rates soared. Over half of all F-105s sent to Southeast Asia were lost in combat or accidents. The Thunder Chief also became a pioneer in a new kind of mission, the Wild Weasel. F-105s, modified with radar homing gear, hunted enemy surface-to-air missile sites at high speed, drawing fire and returning it with deadly precision. These missions demanded pilots who could balance raw velocity with nerves of steel. The F-105 earned its spot just below the top of the speed ladder, a jet that nearly matched the Phantom for raw velocity, but carved its legend through the dangerous blend of speed and firepower. The McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II stands alone at the top of the Vietnam War's speed hierarchy. Designed as a multi-role powerhouse, the Phantom could do what no other fighter in the conflict managed, combine world-class velocity with the muscle to dominate both air, to air and air, to ground missions. 
its manufacturer rated top speed Mach 2.23 or over 1,470 miles per hour at 40,000 feet, remained unmatched by any combat aircraft in Southeast Asia. More than 5,100 Phantoms rolled out of U.S. factories, serving with the Air Force, Navy, and Marine Corps, and earning a reputation as the backbone of American air power. The F-4's speed was more than just a number on a data sheet. In practice, it meant the difference between life and death, initiative and reaction. Pilots could climb, accelerate, and escape at rates that left adversaries scrambling. The Phantom's dual J-79 engines provided a surge of thrust that let it catch or outpace the vaunted MiG-21 in a drag race. And its missile armament, four AIM-7 Sparrows and four AIM-9 Sidewinders, gave it reach that matched its speed. But the real test came in combat, where the Phantom's velocity and flexibility were put to the ultimate test. Operation Bolo, flown on January 2, 1967, became the defining moment for the F-4's legend. In this mission, U.S. pilots led by Colonel Robin Olds used deception and raw acceleration to lure North Vietnamese MiG-21s into a deadly trap. The Phantoms flew bomber profiles, mimicking slower F-105s, then snapped to full afterburner as soon as the MiGs committed. Within minutes, seven MiG-21s were shot down the largest single-day tally of the war. Cockpit recordings capture the urgency, burner went in, and we out-accelerated them right out of the fight. The F-4's ability to shift from slow, vulnerable ingress to blistering attack speed with a flick of the throttle left enemy pilots with no time to adapt. The Phantom's speed was not just for ambushes. In the chaos of air combat, it allowed pilots to break off engagements evade surface-to-air missiles, and return to base even after sustaining damage. Its range and payload meant it could strike deep into hostile territory and still have the legs to fight its way home. No other jet in Vietnam matched this combination of top-end velocity, combat versatility, and operational impact. From dogfights over Hanoi to strike escort missions and wild weasel sorties, the F-4 Phantom II proved that speed, when paired with adaptability and firepower, was the ultimate force multiplier. If the Vietnam War had a king of speed, the Phantom wore the crown by every measure that mattered. Across all these jets, one truth emerges. In Vietnam, speed was never just about numbers. It shaped survival, strategy, and the very outcome of each mission. These aircraft prove that in modern warfare, technology alone never decides the victor. It is how humans wield it that truly changes history.